Hello. Today I'm going to be discussing EEPROMs in relation to older motherboards and computers. And one of the problems that people have that deal with older radio and electronic equipment is you've often got to keep older computers around to be able to program and use the older radios and stuff because newer computers will not run the uh, programs properly and or too fast to communicate with the radios and properly program them so generally you have to keep around old computers and motherboards to be able to run the software and program the older equipment but one of the problems you'll run into with older computer equipment and keeping it going is EEPROM rot or EEPROM degradation because as one key feature of EEPROMs is they have a rated data retention life of about 20 to 30 years in general depending on manufacturer and a lot of the older computer equipment like this motherboard here if you look as a BIOS date of 88 1988 so the motherboard in question this one here is already reaching close to 30 years and so the EEPROMs which were programmed about 30 years ago about 28 or so years ago are reaching the point that the charges in each of the individual bits on the EEPROM is degrading to the point that they're just right on the edge of either reading one or zero and that would generally cause certain symptoms in an older motherboard or computer and that is symptoms like randomly hanging or crashing or programs randomly crashing and stuff there either when it gets hot or or during reboot refusing to reboot and stuff and generally the problem unless some other physical damage has happened to the motherboard on older ones is the EEPROM degrading to the point that the information the processor tries to read off of it is basically becomes gibberish and that the motherboard can't function at that point there's one way to deal with it and that's reburning or reflashing the EEPROMs and the way you do that is pull them off, put them on an EEPROM reader or programmer, try to get a valid solid copy of the BIOS off of the chip and then reburn it verbatim to the EEPROM which basically refreshes each of the individual cells and makes the EEPROM to the point that it should be good for another 20 or 30 years starting from a fresh burn and that's what I did with this motherboard here it was getting to the point that it was flaky when it heat up it would randomly crash and either that or refuse to boot and stuff pulled the EEPROMs off tuck and read them at low voltage to get a solid reliable copy of the BIOS then I reburnt then verbatim to the chips put it back on and as you can see now it's been running 20 some minutes and not a single glitch I've tried restarting it and everything else and pretty much no problems at all I can detect with it which is made possible from the fact that the EEPROMs that it's got for basic functional operation of the board has now got a fresh copy of the data and it can reliably read it instead of once in a while a command or something coming off garbled or something which causes the CPU to go off in a random tangent thus causing the whole computer to crash. The only other problem 
situation you've got with degrading EPROMs on older computers will be the keyboard controller, the 8041 or the 8042. It, depending on make or type, is either going to be an EPROM or it's going to be MaskROM or runtime programmable. If it's MaskROM or runtime programmable, you should not have a problem with the information on it degrading. But if it's EPROM, you might have a problem with the keyboard controller ceasing to function. And that's a bit more harder to deal with, but as far as the BIOS itself on the two EPROMs, it's quick and easy to pull them off, get a good copy of the BIOS, reflash them, and that, as I said, should extend the life of your older computer another 20, 30 years for going any other problems. And one of the reasons it's real easy and quick to do it is you don't even have to erase the old EEPROM to reflash it or reburn it because you're literally putting data back in verbatim cell per cell what is already there. So you're just reprogramming a 1 to a cell that already was a 1 and a 0 to a cell that already was a 0. So the uh, shouldn't require any erasing just put it in read make sure it's a valid copy reburn as is and then you should not have any issues from there so just a basic overview something you have to keep track of on all the computers so in that regards take care see you later